Irene Mia, Senior Economist at the World Economic Forum and co-author of the Global Information Technology Report 2006-2007. First question, what accounts for Denmark and Sweden's climb up the Network Readiness Index this year into first and second spot respectively? Well, Nordic countries in general have been extremely successful over the year to leverage ICT for development and competitiveness. That explains also why they are number one, I mean, in top position also in our general competitiveness index. In general, they share a number of characteristics which have led Nordic countries actually to, uh, to occupy the first spot of our, of our network rankings. Uh, namely, the, an early focus by the government on uh, education and innovation, which resulted in, the, in a, an extremely good uh, education system. Um, a very conducive uh, uh, market environment for, uh, for, for ICT, and uh, also a very conducive regulatory environment for ICT. Uh, in particular, Denmark, uh, it must be stated that the government has, uh, has, uh, has put a very early emphasis on ICT penetration and innovation, and has been able to involve the private sector in a common vision of ICT penetration. Um, also in the case of Denmark, it's, particular, it's particularly notable um, a, a, very, a very marked uh, propension of the private sector and the public sector in adopting new technology. So these are the reasons actually which explain why Nordic countries are, are, are doing extremely well in our rankings. Last year's number one, the United States actually dropped down to seventh spot. Uh, was this surprising and, and why did it slide down the rankings? Well, I wouldn't say it's a dramatic slide in a way. It's, uh, it's true with a few positions and it's uh, mainly due to a deterioration in the regulatory environment. But it must be said as well that the U.S. is still leading the world in, the world in a number of, of dimensions, such as the, the market environment. The United States has an extremely conducive market environment for, uh, for doing business in general, for ICT specifically uh, businesses, uh, venture capital av availability, sophistication of the financial markets. The United States is actually number one in all these dimensions, which is extremely important, especially for startups in the ICT sector. Uh, apart from that, the U.S. is still, uh, is still uh, displaying the best uh, uh, tertiary education system in the world and is still one of the most innovative countries in the world, number one for a uh, number of uh, patents in the U.S. So I would say that, uh, ICT, um, that the U.S. is still the ICT powerhouse in the world, even if it's, it, it, it's true it dropped a few positions from last year. Now, Latin America as a region... Uh, progressed uh, very well in this year's um, index. Uh, what accounts for this improved performance and uh, how do they compare with other regions of the world? Yes, it's true that Latin America this year is, is finally increasing after a, a few bad years in a way. Uh, I would say that uh, um, the, improve, the general improvement is partly explained by, by the fact that we are seeing the results actually of the uh, increasing uh, emphasis put on ICT in the policy agendas uh, in the region. Um, it must be said that Latin America has, has probably adopted quite late uh, with respect to other regions of the world um, policy agenda on, on, on ICT, but this agenda have, proven, have, have shown a great, a great, re, um, a great resilience uh, to political change pointing to a consensus uh, in, the, in the civil society and uh, government uh, alike on uh, the necessity to upgrade ICT infrastructure, to promote ICT penetration and e-government practices. So it's, it's a very encouraging trend for the region. At the same time, there are a number of shortcomings which needs to be addressed for the region to really catch up with, uh, with Asia or Europe or the US. Uh, which have to do with the, with the education system, which is not up to the task at the moment. The um, research and development uh, uh, investment in the region, which is uh, very, very much lower than in other regions, uh, notably US or, the, or Japan or, or Korea. Uh, and also it's uh, very much uh, uh, dominated by the government role, so the private sector should, uh, should, uh, should, have, should play a more active role in uh, research and development. Also, the market environment is still a bit over-regulated for uh, being really conducive to ICT development. So these are the shortcomings which need to be addressed for the region to progress even more. Now, Africa as, uh, as a region also tends to occupy the lower rankings of the Network Readiness Index. Um, which areas can they work on to improve their ICT? For development. Yeah, well, it's true that Africa has, has unfortunately featured quite low in our in our rankings over the year. 
Uh, at the same time, it must be said that Africa is, uh, is uh, has actually increased quite quickly its penetration rate in the last years and uh, retains a lot of potential for, for investor. But still, it hasn't moved uh, fastly enough compared to other regions uh, of the world. Um, Main problematic uh, factors have to do with the uh, with, with, uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure are not extensive and developed enough in, uh, in the region. Uh, education levels are not up to the task. Uh, the business environment is still very uh, inefficient and over-regulated. There are problems of, uh, of uh, poor governance as well. Um, to this regard, actually, there is a very interesting contribution in, the, in, the, in this year report on, uh, by uh, IMF uh, economist Marcus Hacker on access to telecommunication in Africa, which is very interesting. It's actually addressing some of those uh, shortcomings and what needs to be done to improve. And a final question. How can the Global Information Technology Report be used as a, as a tool to improve ICT readiness in order to, to drive development? Well, the, I see the GITR is actually trying to identify the enabling factors for leveraging ICT for development. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it provides to government and, uh, and the, 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 the business sector and civil society alike a benchmarking tool to assess the country performance against the past performance as well as against other, other countries. In doing that, it actually underlines best practices and best policies and hope to, to, to provide government and uh, civil society um, a, a neutral platform for debates and dialogue on what needs to be done to improve uh, ICT readiness.